Here we are, we're finally looking at some real computational data on how another way we can model bonding in a molecule like methane. So if you're looking at this screen, you're seeing a ton of numbers and you might be thinking, egad. Uh, this makes me remember Dora the Explorer, you know, Ayutame, Ayutame, okay? But you don't need to be rescued. Everything's just fine. So let's look at what's happening. This is actually not that different from what we were doing with hybridization. In hybridization, we took all of our starting atomic orbitals in this molecule. And remember, we had eight of those. Here are our eight starting atomic orbitals. We have um, a, an S on a hydrogen, an S and three Ps on carbon, and then S is for the other hydrogen. So there are eight input atomic orbitals. So these are our AOs and, and they're repeated down here, all eight atomic orbitals. Now, from those atomic orbitals, we're gonna construct eight, eight atomic orbitals in eight new molecular orbitals. One, two, three, you get the idea, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so, so we, it's exact same idea. We have to conserve the number of orbitals. That applies whether we're talking hybridization or these higher level computational methods. Now, let's look at um, our uh, coefficients. So, I said we have to make sure, in a previous video, we have to make sure that if we're using this S orbital on this uh, one hydrogen, then we need to make sure we use up all that orbital. And how do we do that in hybridization? We could simply add up coefficients. Well, if you go across and say, okay, in molecular orbital number one, this is the coefficient for that S orbital. And molecular orbital number two, we're going to use a little bit more. Oops, and here's a negative coefficient. That's fine. Well, if you went through and added up all eight of these coefficient values, you would find that doesn't exist equal to one. As it turns out, in these computational methods, we don't want the sum of the coefficients. We want the sum of the squares of the coefficients. And so that, that's one reason why the negative values aren't really a problem, because we're going to square that negative value and we'll get a positive number from it. And then we add those up. And if you add up, square all these numbers going across along here and add them with those numbers after they've been squared, you will get a value of 1. So we indeed use up this 1s orbital. Great. Now, I don't want to get too much into all these different values here, but if, if you look at the table, all these orbitals are used in different ways in the different new molecular orbitals that we can construct. It. But here's something I do want to highlight. It's the energy value. So as it turns out, these orbitals are listed in terms of energy. These are the lowest energy, and number eight is the highest energy. Oop, highest. And we can see that. So this first orbital has an energy of minus, about minus 29 electron volts. And then we go up here and this is about 5.2 electron volts. So there's a big difference in range. If you recall, how many electrons are we going to put into this molecule? Well, just based on the valence electrons, we're going to have eight electrons. Eight electrons fills four of the molecular orbitals. So number one should be filled with two electrons. Uh-oh, that's not a good thing. Let's get you back. I need the mouse to fix this. Ayutame, ayutame. Okay, there we go. So this is filled. Two is filled, three is filled, and four is also filled. So one through an MO, one through four, these are our filled orbitals. These are our sigma bonds. And MOs 5 through 8 are vacant. These are going to be our sigma stars. Great. And if you notice, look at the energies. 1 is nice low energy. 2, 3, and 4 have the exact same energy. And then we have a big gap until we get to 5, which has a positive energy, and then 6 and 7 and 8 also have positive energies. But the key thing is, remember why we, we changed our model from hybridization? Because we weren't fitting the experimental data. Now, when we look at this picture, we have two different energies possible for our orbitals. One is really low at minus, about minus 29, and the other three are quite a bit higher up at 
If we try to strip an electron out of this molecule, there are two energies we could observe. Either an electron from MO number one, which is low energy, or an electron from either MO two, three, or four. And all those have the same energy. We should see two ionization energies here. And that's exactly what the experimental data says. So here is an example of how this computational model accommodates more of the experimental data that we observe on our molecule of methane. And these types of coefficients are really super useful for other types of things we've been trying to explain all along throughout the semester through things like resonance. And we'll see those in later videos.